This video will show you how to use Logger Pro Video Analysis to analyze a video. When taking a video for Logger Pro Video Analysis, you need to make sure to place a meter stick in the frame. This is used as a scale. It doesn't have to be a meter stick, but it needs to be an object of known size. The meter stick should be the same distance from the camera as the object you are analyzing. You should also use a tripod to ensure the camera doesn't move while the video is being taken. Once you have your video file, it needs to be saved onto your computer. Logger Pro accesses this file from that saved location. And if you move the file from that location, when you return to your Logger Pro file, you will not be able to access the video within Logger Pro. So make sure you save the file in a place and don't move it. Um, I'm going to show you that I'm doing that here. So notice that I have, um, this is my flip video camera. I'm going to drag this file into my Logger Pro videos file. And now it is off my camera and onto my computer so Logger Pro can access it. Then I open Logger Pro. I'm going to go to Insert Movie. And then I have to find my video. And I double click there. It inserts the video into the Logger Pro screen. On the bottom part here, you have your bar, um, your controls. And then on the bottom right, there's a button that opens the toolbar. You'll want to do that. The first thing you want to do is set your scale. The fourth button down, if you cursor over it, is that set scale. Click there, and then you're going to click and drag the length of your scale object, which is usually a meter stick. When you unclick, it will automatically pop up at this box. It's automatically set to one meter, so I'm going to press OK since I used a meter stick. Next, you need to find the frame which you want to use in order to analyze the video. So there's a lot of dead space here because I turned on the camera and then started the car. So I'm going to find the frame that I want to use. I want to use this frame. You can see that my hand is off of the cars. The cars are now moving on their own. And so this will be my first frame I'm going to analyze. To plot the motion of an object, you're going to use the second button down. And you want to pick a point on the car that you can use every single time. So um, I'm going to pick the center of this front wheel. And I'm just going to click. Notice a blue dot uh, is left on the screen. And then it automatically frame advances for me. And I'm just going to plot through this motion of this car. As the objects move faster, you may find that the image is blurry. You gotta do the best you can there. Alright, so that'll do for that one. Sometimes you will have to, you'll want to analyze more than one object. To do that, you click on this button right here, which um, allows you to add a point series. So if you click there, you can, you're now in the second point series. To check that, you click here, it shows you you're on the second point series. Go back to the frame you want to start with, and now pick a point on your second object and click and you'll notice it's frame advancing and then plotting the motion of the dump truck. Now sometimes this gets a little tricky, especially if you're analyzing something that's moving slow. Um, moving slowly. So there are several things you can do to help you with this. See how these dots are very close together. If the dots kind of get in the way of your view of your point on the truck, you can click this button, the toggle button, and it'll take away the trails. So now 
I can put a dot here, I can see that whole picture and I don't have the other dots getting in my way. So I'm going to put those back on. And then notice that I did too many dots for the dump trucks. I have more dots for the dump truck than I do for the pickup truck. I can delete dots and sometimes you'll put them somewhere accidentally. You're going to click on this top button and then select the point you want to delete and just press delete. I think I need to delete one more. And I'll get rid of those dots. You also need to be able to set your origin. So the third button down is set origin. It automatically sets it for you, but you can also adjust it. So notice that my camera is not exactly straight. It's kind of tilted. And I want to show the motion of these cars, but I just want it to be in the X direction. I don't want to consider their motion in the X and Y direction. So I click here and I set the origin. I can also rotate the axes. I'm going to rotate my axes so that my x-axis is parallel to the motion of the car. So I'm going to do that. And you'll notice that um, these dots are right along the x-axis, so there's not going to be any motion in the y direction. I mentioned that these dots are really close together and sometimes that's challenging to work with. You can go up here to options and movie options and you can change some things about the video analysis. This is automatically set to advance one frame after adding a new point. If you have something that's moving really slowly you might have it advance five frames or ten frames or two frames. You can change that right there. You can also set the first um, point to be time zero. So notice on my graph back here, we're looking at around 14 seconds, but we're looking at less than a second of motion. So if I click this, that should reset it to zero. I don't really care about that right now, so I'm not going to do that. All right, so now we have everything in our video window finished. Don't delete this video window from your logger profile, even if you think you're finished with it, because if you need to correct something and you've deleted the video, you're going to have to start over. I would suggest just moving it to the back. Before you move it to the back, click on this top right button, because if you leave it on the, the add point button or the set origin button, then when you click back on the frame to bring it back to the front, it's going to leave a point there or reset the origin. If you just select this one, then when you click there, it doesn't do anything. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to move this to the back. And now I have my graph and my data table. In this case, I'm just going to look at the X direction motion. You may be asked to look at Y direction motion as well, but I'm just going to worry about the X direction motion of these two things. So sorry about that. <laughs> um, I'm going to move this up here and expand our data table so we can see what we have on our data table. We have time, we have motion in the x direction and motion in the y direction for the first car, the pickup truck, and then velocity in x and velocity in the y. Logger Pro will automatically calculate those for you. I'm going to rename these so that I remember which is which. Double click at the top of the data column to rename it. And I'm going to say pickup for the pickup truck. And I'm going to call this short. Use P for my short name. Um, actually, I'm going to call that pickup position. Then for velocity, I'm going to say pickup velocity. Call that V sub P. And then I'm going to scroll over and do the same thing for the dump truck. Oops, that's not velocity, that's position. And 
that D for dump truck. And then velocity of dump truck. And I'll do V sub C. Notice that Slagger Pros used the derivative to calculate the velocity of the dump truck. I'm not really worried about the y direction because I set my axes so that the cars aren't really moving in the y direction. To change what I have on my graph, I'm going to click on the y axis title. And I'm going to go to more. Here you can select what it graphs. And I only want it to graph the position of the dump truck and the pickup truck in the x direction. So here I can see that my vehicles are moving at different speeds. I also want to title my graph, as always, so we're going to call this one Position versus Time. You get to this by double-clicking on the graph area. You can change all kinds of things about this. You know, you can change the color of the title and everything. Then I want to make a graph of velocity versus time. So I'm going to go to Insert Graph, and Logger Pro will automatically put something there, but I usually want to change it. So I'll click on the Y axis title and go to More. And this time I want the velocity of the dump truck and the velocity of the pickup truck. Press OK. And I need to title this one as well. So I'll call this Velocity versus Time. And we'll make things interesting by having lots of colors. There you have your first two graphs. You may also want to make an acceleration versus time graph. Although Logger Pro doesn't do this for you automatically, you can do it yourself. You go to Experiment, oops, sorry, Data, New Calculated Columns. And I'm going to call this Pickup Acceleration. My short name is going to be AP, and my units will be meters per second squared. Then I want it to take the derivative of velocity to get acceleration, so I click on functions, go to calculus, derivative, and then I have to tell it to take the derivative of the pickup's velocity, so I select pickup velocity from the variable column button. When I press N, you'll notice that I have an acceleration data tape column. I can insert another graph. <laughs> There's my acceleration. Doesn't look very pretty. And I can give it a title. The last thing you may want to do with your graphs is do linear or curved fit. So let's do, it looks like this green line is fairly straight, fairly linear. So I'm going to do a linear fit on it by clicking on this button. And I want to do a linear fit for the dump truck. So I'm going to select that, press OK, and you can see that this does the linear fit for me, gives me a slope and a y-intercept and all that jazz. The red one looks a little bit more curved to me. I could do a curve fit by selecting this button here. And I can go through the different, oh, I'm selected. I have the wrong graph selected. I need to have this graph selected and then press curve fit. So I want to do a curve fit of the pickup. And now I can select between all these different options. I might expect it to be quadratic. I can press try fit. It'll show me what it looks like. It gives me some co um, coefficient information on the right, so I'm going to say I'm happy with that. And that's my curve fit for that. 